Today is May the 3rd, 2011, and I'm going to document here. Uh, I've been asked some questions around town about what tubes can be swapped in and out of amplifiers. Can, for example, KT88s be placed, uh, KT88s directly replace, say, an EL34, 6CA7? Answer is basically no, but rather than just coming up with data and, and posting information, we're going to do some experimenting and uh, we'll actually see what happens. Um, I'll be careful not to destroy anything but this is an old uh, Dynaco Mark IV amp. I've used it in many uh, videos. Great great amplifier. Marvelous 50 watt amp. I, I just love it. Um, right now I've got it set up. It's got an 11.2 ohm resistor in it which is standard in the cathode circuits of the uh, 6550s KT88s. And it's supposed to be adjusted to 1.56 volts and there it is right there bounces around a little bit but that's okay and then when we drive it when we drive it here with uh, our equipment and we watch the output we see that right before clipping there's no clipping there's clipping you see clipping pretty good there so severe clipping we back off just before clipping and we can see that we're doing 20 volts across 8 ohms, which is 20 squared, 400 divided by 8, which is 50 watts at 0.2% at a kilohertz. There's its harmonic profile, very nice and clean, beautiful 50 watts at, at a kilohertz. So that's what it does. Now, we're not going to try to test this thing at different frequencies, but I'm going to remove the KT88s and replace it with 6L6s, a pair of uh, nicely matched old GE 6L6 is here. This one measured, I don't remember what tube test drive measured this one. I got 760 on this one, it's 764 on this one. So let's see how that works and we're gonna in particular watch the cathode current. Turn this back now. We're gonna watch the this voltage here which will be the we'll interpret it to be the cathode current and uh, while if you do the math, 1.56 volts across an 11.2 ohm resistor is 140 milliamps. So these uh, KT88s are running at 70 milliamps per tube. Now the 6L6 is going to be running at about 50 or less. So let's see what happens. Okay, now we have the 6L6s in there. I have not touched any bias adjustments on the amplifier. Bias adjustments right over here, but I'm not touching it. And we have. 0.85 volts. And if we do the math here, the current, we want to know the current through E over R, um, 0.85, darn glare, I can see it too, 11.2 uh, point zero eight, 80 milliamps. That's just right. That works great. So, in this 6550 amp, 6550 KT88, you can directly pull out the KT88s and stick good 6L6s in there and end up with the right cathode current. Now, if we, when we start adjusting and looking at our power and our distortion, let's do the same thing we did a while ago. Let's run it up to yeah, that's not quite as good, but a little rounding right down here, I can see. But we get darn near the same thing, 19.7 to 2.75% distortion. So the distortion has gone up considerably. 19.7 volts, a while ago we had just a little over 20, so we still got almost 50 watts. We're running these 6L6s really hard, but if we, um, if we back this thing down a little bit more here, let's watch our distortion. 1.3%, let's drop it down, there we go, 1%, still 17 volts, there it is, 16.5 to 17 volts at 1%, it's still not bad, 16.5, that'd be 16.5 uh, squared 8 divide, that's still, that's 34 watts, so we dropped from 50 watts to 34 watts, 34 watts is a, a good level for a pair of 6L6s, but 
we just simply pulled out the KT88s and put in 6L6s and it works and our bias voltage has not been changed and we're not we're not exceeding the uh, the cathode current on the 6L6s so this works but would it work the other way around and the answer is going to be no because um, generally 6L6s are set at about minus 37 volts, 37 to 40 volts. The KT88s are set at minus 48. The voltage is quite high if, if you remember, if you've uh, tinkered around with these uh, Dynaco amps, it's up at 500 volts. It's a little bit high for the 6L6s, probably not a recommended thing to do, but you could do it in a pinch. Probably wouldn't want to run it long term that way, but didn't even have to make an adjustment and it does work and it does work reasonably well. We're going to go to the um, an EL37 amplifier now, EL34, excuse me, the 6CA7, and do the same thing with the 6L6 and the KT88, and we'll see. Okay, well here we go with another amplifier that uh, I built in 1977. This is actually a uh, channel out of a old Macintosh MA230. It originally used 7591s here. I ordered this transformer direct from Macintosh back in 1977. Still got the original receipt. I think it cost about 30 bucks. It even surprised me that long ago. But anyway, <clears throat> it's it's that circuit with a 12AX7, 12AU7 driving the the two originally uh, 7591s. These are 6CA7s, the EL34s. It's got a um, bias adjustment for this tube, a bias adjustment for this tube, and then a, a balance adjustment for the driver. So I've got them all set up right now. It's balanced. Uh, these uh, two I've got set up for about 50 milliamps, which we'll be able to see right here on our meter. This is across the cathode of one of them. And there it is. It's across 10 ohms, so that'd be uh, 53 milliamps. Move it uh, to the other test point. We have about the same. Okay, and as we crank it up, well, first we probably ought to watch the uh, oscilloscope to make sure we don't clip too bad. There it is. That's just below clipping. 18 volts, 18.16 squared, divided by 8 is its power, which is a reasonable amount of power. Uh, we call it 18.2. Uh, 18.2 squared 8 divide 41 watts 41.41 so it'll do 40 watts uh, Macintosh rates it at 30 MA230 but anyway so what we're going to do now is without changing anything because remember we're still trying to see what we can directly substitute without making adjustments different tubes and I'm going to plug these same two 6L6's in there and watch it Oops. and watch it very carefully okay now we have our 6L6's in there none of this has been touched but we're monitoring this tube at the moment and it's running at about 68 milliamps too much that's not it's going to work but it's not going to last long let's move over to the other one 65 to 66 milliamps that's too high if you plug it in it'll work and you'll go great you know that was great that really worked but uh, at uh, with no drive not being driven at all see we have absolutely no output that 0.5 is in millivolts so it's zero uh, the cathode current's too high and these tubes run like that are not going to last very long it won't hurt to uh, play with them a little bit so let's turn up the volume and see what kind of power it puts out where it starts clipping about the same about the same point 18 at a half percent so what that means is you can't directly replace the EL34 with 6L6's without making some bias adjustments now the bias adjustment range on this amplifier is very wide I did that on purpose a long time ago so that I could use different tubes in it now without making another adjustment 
we'll try the KT88s in there and see uh, what kind of current. We don't want over 50 milliamps. 50 milliamps is about right for uh, the 6CA7s, the 6L6s, and about 70 milliamps for the KT88. So let's try them. Okay, now we have the two KT88s in there, and the uh, cathode current's climbing pretty high. See, that's over a volt, so that's over 100 milliamps. That's 109 milliamps right there per tube. That's too high. So there are 110 milliamps there. Let's move over here to the uh, other tube. Ooh, see we got 129 milliamps there. So this is not going to work. So you cannot take your EL34 amp and plug 6L6s into it or KT88s or 6550s without making bias adjustments. You're, you're going to have a very short-lived set of tubes and possibly your ampler at 130 milliamps uh, per tube there. That's one tube. Okay, let's go back to the other one while it's warmed up some more and 113 milliamps there so this is not going to work for very long can't do that okay now I made the proper bias adjustments for these KT88s because like I say I have a very wide uh, range here on each of these bias pots so there I have this tube plugged in there set up for 70 milliamps we move to the other test point we have that one set up for 70 milliamps. That's about right for a KT88. And if we start driving it, we can get, well, see we're over, we're clipping right there a little bit. Let's back off of that. About the same thing, about 18 volts at 0.2%. So we're not really going much, uh, we're not changing our power and our distortion very much. But now that we've got it adjusted for the KT88s, which is a, a more negative bias voltage, I think we're going to be able to plug in the 6L6s or the 6CA7s and we won't be exceeding their current. So let's try that and we'll just do that in a static condition. Okay, now without actually doing much power, well, we'll do a power measurement. But here's our 6L6s in our formerly KT88 amplifier and our current is down to 32 milliamps very good it's not going to burn up it's going to actually work and here's the other tube 37 36.8 37 milliamps so it's not going to burn up if we put 6L6's in our KT88 amplifier however the, the voltage on the KT88's can be considerably higher than what a 6L6 should have but in an emergency it could work and here's our power Uh, a little bit lower power, a little bit higher distortion. So we haven't optimized our 6L6s. But we, we could go down in it, but not up. That is go down from a KT88 to a 6L6. Now let's put the 6CA7 in and see what happens. And last but certainly not least, we have our 6CA7 back in our KT88 adjusted amplifier and this tube has a current of 22.6 milliamps not going to go up in flames this one is uh... wow that one's really low something must be wrong there eight and a half milliamps so that's in millivolts 0 0.085 volts Back to the other one. Yeah, it doesn't seem to make sense, does it? Why it would be that low? But anyway, that's what it is. Uh, maybe the tube is a little weak. This one, out of, this one right here is, is responding what about what I would expect about 22, 23 milliamps. So there again, we can uh, we can put our 6CA7s in that 6550 KT88 amplifier and they won't they won't go up in flames because of uh, excessive high cathode current I'm not suggesting anybody go and change their tubes around but this is an experiment in real empirical evidence of what you 
could do. I know that musicians are infinitely uh, interested in, in the sound that you get and it all comes from the harmonic profile. That's one thing that's very important that you can actually measure. The harmonic profile, I, I see that amplifiers that I, that I test, wish I had documented all of them, but I haven't. But uh, the Fenders versus the, the Vox versus the Marshalls, etc. They all have a different harmonic profile, although they put out similar amounts of power and similar amounts of actually total harmonic distortion. Their, uh, their harmonic profile is different and I believe that's what gives them their different sound. Anyway, I hope this helps. Like I say, if you do experiment, be careful. It looks like you can uh, go one way but not the other. Hope this helps.